Chapter 17, Mr. Kermit. <clears throat> the good bunny's chart is mocking me. No matter where I am in the room, my eyes are drawn to the brightest pink poster board with its white puppy tails. Even at my desk, even at my desk, when I can't see it, I sense it behind me. Knowing it's there is almost as bad as looking at it. As great as the temptation may be, I can't bring myself to throw it out. Emma keeps finding excuses to come over and check on it. She's frustrated that no one is earning any puffy tails. She's determined to stick with the teaching style that worked with her kindergarten class last year. Her mother was like that, 100% headstrong when she believed she was right. Middle schoolers won't excel for that kind of infantile reward system. And these particular middle schoolers won't excel if you put 10,000 volts to the soles of their feet. The only thing that motivates them, apparently, is the prospect of dumping mass quantities of vuvuzelas into the river. But that's another story and a much more bizarre one. I don't like to think about that. There are some questions that should never be answered. My new habit is to get to class before the kids. That way, I can be finished with the New York Times crossword puzzle by the time they arrive. Just because the school saddled me with the worst class in the district doesn't mean I have to pass that disrespect onto the students. They deserve better, some of them, one or two. And anyway, all of them jumped into the river when they thought their teacher was drowning. That says something. I'm still not sure what. As I spread the newspaper out, I have to push the toilet bowl to the edge of the desk, which sends some paper skittering to the floor. A couple of weeks ago, I would barely have noticed, but now that this place looks sort of like a real classroom, it's worth a little effort to keep things neat. If not, one of these days, Emma might show up with a clean bunnies poster, and this one will have the name Zachary on it. I'm about to toss the papers when I recognize the first page. It's one of my old worksheets, accompanied by four additional pages of neat handwriting. Kiana Rubini reads the name at the top. I remember her handing in something like this, and come to think of it, she always she's always been a little less out to lunch than, she, than the rest of them. I scan a few lines. It's an essay of all things, and it seems to be pretty well written. I read on, drawn in by her compelling sentences and well-constructed arguments about mass transit. She's really enthused about the subject and she expresses herself beautifully. What's she doing in SCS 8? This is brilliant work. Any teacher would be delighted to receive an essay like this. Why, back when I was first starting out, my vision clouds. That was a long time ago when teaching was more than a job. It was a sacred mission. I was young and stupid then, and I vowed never again to make the mistake of caring about the students. I cared about Jake Terranova once. Look where that got me. On the other hand, it isn't Kiana's fault that Terranova went into business selling exams. It won't be breaking the promise I made to myself to give her the feedback she deserves for a fantastic piece of work. So later, when the students arrive, I return her paper. Written across the top is A plus, excellent. She's surprised at first, then thrilled. It triggers more long suppressed memories, well-deserved praise, pride, and satisfaction. Motivated teacher, motivated student. And then she asks the question I expect the least. Do I get a puffy tail? Why would good bunnies even be on the radar screen of someone capable of writing such a top-notch essay? But I reply, sure, why not? As I attach the Velcro puffy tail next to her name on the chart, I have the undivided attention of every soul in that classroom. If I'd taken out a sword and knighted the girl, it couldn't have been a bigger event. Brain barnstorm raises a crutch. How come she gets one of those things? What about the rest of us? 
She wrote an essay, I explained. If you want a puffy tail, you have to work for it. Not necessarily, Parker pipes up. Miss Fountain says you can also get one for being a helpful hair. I drive my grams to the senior center every day. If that's not helpful, what is? So he gets a puffy tail too. That opens the floodgates. I loaded the dishwasher after dinner last night. I did blue face paint at the Avatar convention. I broke scoring records in three sports. I took out the garbage. I award puffy tails like it's going out of style. True, most of these accomplishments aren't very impressive, but puffy tails themselves are so meaningless that it would be hypocritical to raise the standard to earn them. Rahim gets one for staying awake long enough to receive it. Only Aldo comes up with anything better than, on the bus today, this kid tripped over my book bag and landed in gum. I sigh. That doesn't sound very uh, helpful to me. Aldo tries again. Well, now it's in his hair and he can't get rid of it. He looks like a doofus. Dude, you could have moved your bag out of his way, Barnstorm pronounces. That's the helpful hair way. Otherwise, you should lose a puppy tail. He's already at zero, Mateo puts in. Zero is better, Aldo explodes, because rabbit butts are stupid. Easy to say when you don't have any barnstorm needles. Come on, Aldo, Kiana whispers. You must have done something nice. The boy is still stumped. He sulks for the rest of the day. Just before lunch, Emma looks in, catches sight of the poster board with so many new puffy tails and beams with pleasure. When I submit the official request for a school bus, Principal Vargas regards me with deep suspicion. She's probably thinking about how many Vuvuzuelas you can cram into a whole bus. A lot more than a thousand for sure. I elaborate. It's for a field trip. Field trip? She's amazed. For your kids? Where? We're going to Terra Nova Motors. Speaking those words is even harder than I thought it would be. We've been invited to tour the repair shop. I regurgitate Emma's reasons why this is a good idea. Back up, Zachary. I've known you for a long time. Why would you go anywhere near Jake and Terranova? I sigh. Emma found him at some country club shindig. She's a serious busybody, that one. She told him about the Spirit Week kerfuff kerfuffle and how it dredged up what happened. Now he wants to make amends. The principal folds her arm in front of her. And you want to give him an opportunity to clear this, his conscience? It's not me, I admit. It's the kids. They came alive when he walked into the room. They consider him some kind of celebrity. Listen, Christina, I know they're awful, but what we did to them is just as awful. Are we really going to keep them cooped up like prisoners until they can be in the high school's headache? If there's a chance for them to have a real education, we have to take it. And if that means Jake Terranova, then so be it. Question number one, why is Mr. Kermit having a change of heart about teaching the kids and being there for his students? She looks at me for an uncomfortably long moment. The last time I heard words like that, they came from a young teacher I used to work with, a teacher named Zachary Kermit. That person is gone forever, I assure her, and he is never coming back, which is a good thing because he was an idiot. All right, you've got your bus. The principal scribbles a signature on the requisition form and leans back in her chair, her expression sober. One more thing, Zachary. 
you've probably already noticed that Dr. Thaddeus isn't exactly your biggest fan. Well, the Vuvuzuelas didn't do anything to change that. I don't lose sleep over what he thinks. That's mostly because I have terrible insomnia that there isn't much sleep for me to lose. But I don't mention that to Christina. You didn't hear this from me, she persists, but I think he's going to try to go after your early retirement. I shrug. He's done it already. I know why I got saddled with the unteachables. He wants me to quit. He'll see his own ears first. There's another way, she reminds me grimly. One wrong step and he'll fire you. Don't give him cause. I'll protect you as much as I can, but I'm not the superintendent. He is. And never underestimate how much power that gives him. I nod, take the bus authorization and get out of there. It's the cheating scandal still haunting me after all these years. Thaddeus will never forgive me for it. I take, I thought Jake Terranova was back. Correction, he never left. Hey, question number two, make a prediction about what you think the superintendent may or may not do to Mr. Kermit. 